Well, hello, flute players. This is Mr. Walls here to, with a video to help you learn how to play Old MacDonald Had a Band out of our Essential Elements Band Book. It is, of course, song number 56 on page 13. Let's get started. If you will take a close look at this piece of music, you'll notice that it is three lines long, and at the end of the second line, there's a repeat sign. And it is very, very important that when you get to that repeat sign, you go back to the beginning of the song and play it again. And then once you've played to the repeat sign for the second time, you can go on to measure 13 and finish out the song. When we play this in full band, that is how we will do it. So you want to definitely make sure that that is how you are practicing it so that you're used to that repeat. There's an, one other thing about this song that's kind of tricky right there around measure nine. We'll talk about that when we get there. So we're going to start at the very beginning of the song. It starts with three E flats and then a B flat. So finger your E flat and then your B flat. Back and forth. So we're going to go E, 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 B. Let's do that. Just those four notes. The first four notes of Old MacDonald Had a Band. One, two, ready, and play. That's not too bad. Let's do that again. One, two, ready, and play. Now we end on B flat, and the next note that we go to is C. So we, we have E, 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 B, C, B, B. I'm sorry, C, C, B. I apologize. Let's play C, C, B. One, two, ready, and play. That's pretty easy, C to B flat. Let's do that again. Ready? Play. And now let's put the first two measures together. E, 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 B, C, C, B. Ready? One, two, beginning, go. Let's do that again. One, two, E flat, then B. So we end on a B flat, and our next note is G. B flat to G. And we have G, G, F, F, E. That's pretty easy. G, G, F, F, E. Let's play that. One, two, ready, go. Let's do that again. G, G, F, F, E. Ready, and play. Rest, rest. And now we go to a B flat again. B, E, 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 B, C, C, B. So it's just like the beginning again, except we have what we call a pickup note. So right after where we stopped, there are two quarter rests, two one beat rests, and then we continue with a B flat up to three E's. And that three E's here is just like the very beginning. So let's do that. B flat, E, 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 B, C, C, B. Here we go. And one, ready, B. Rest. We go to the next line, and we do the same thing that we did earlier. G, G, F, F, E. Let's do that. G, G, F, F, E. One, two, ready, play. Rest, 
rest, rest, rest. Okay, so this place in the song is a little confusing. Every, I'm sure everyone knows this song, right? When we're on the second line, we're going E, I, E, I, O. And we expect to hear with a quack, quack here and a quack, quack there, right? That's the next part of the song. But flutes and clarinets have this long gap there where they don't play anything. The trumpets play with a quack, quack here, and then they stop and you answer them. And you play with a quack, quack there, and then the trumpets play here a quack, and then you answer with there a quack. And then you have a whole measure out, and the drums go cha 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 everywhere a quack quack, and then it goes back to the beginning of the song, and we play that whole two lines again. Okay, it's really really important though that we count the beats where we rest perfectly. So on the second line again at the beginning of the second line, we go G G. F, F, E. And the last note we play right there, that E is on the first beat of that measure. That's measure eight, the measure before measure nine. We rest on beats two, three, and four. We continue resting at measure nine on beats one, two, and three. And then we come in on our eighth note B flats on beat four. So we rest three beats before measure nine and we rest three beats at measure nine, and then we come back in, answering the trumpets. The trumpets say, with a quack, quack here, and then we play B, B, E, 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 right? Which is with a quack, quack there. And then the trumpets go, here a quack, and the flutes go, there a quack, where you have your E, 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 okay? So let's start at the beginning of the second line on G, G, F, F, E, rest, 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 one, two, three, T, T, ta, 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 okay? Notice that in measure eight, when we went G, G, F, F, E, rest, 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 so that was beats two, three, and four. We played on one, we rested two, three, four, and then we rest one, two, three at measure nine, and come in on beat four with the two eighth note B flats. Let's play it. Here we go, starting at the beginning of the second line on G, G, F, F, E. I'm gonna count through the rests and continue with B, B, E, E, E. G, G, one, Two, ready, and play. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Rest, one, two. One, two, three, four, beginning. And that's where we go E, 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 B at the very beginning again. Okay? It's not as complicated as it seems at first. You're going to get this figured out and you'll be great. Let's do that again. We're starting at the beginning of the second line. We will play this whole line and then we'll repeat back to the beginning and we will play the first two lines. Okay? So this is the first time through at the beginning of the second line on G, G, F, F, E. Remember, we're repeating back to the beginning. One, two, ready, go. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Rest, one, two. One, two, beginning E flat. G, 
So now it's time to go on to measure 13. And measure 13 is just like the beginning. E, 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 B, C, C, B. Let's do it. E, 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 B, C, C, B. Ready? One, two. Ready? And play. Very familiar, right? But look what happens next. At the beginning of the song, on the top line, we, we have quarter notes. We go G, G, F, F, right? But here, we're playing half notes. It's the end of the song. We're stretching these notes out because we're having a big ending. G, G, F, F. Let's play that. G, G, F, F. One, two, ready? Go. And now we're ready for the surprise ending. Have you ever heard somebody knock on a door and go, shave and a haircut, two bits? It's kind of silly, isn't it? That's this ending. We play E, B, B, C, B, D, E. E, B, B, C, B, D, E, again, E, B, B, C, B, D, E. Notice when I pop my fingers on that D, you can actually hear the note, can't you? You should be able to hear that when you're playing. So here's the ending, E, B, B, C, B, D, E. E, are you ready? One, two, ready, play. Let's do that again. One, two, E, B, B. D. Let's play from measure 13 to the end. Here we go. One, two, three E flats. Flutes, when you're practicing this song, break it down just like I do it in the video. Just practice one measure at a time. Make sure that you're understanding what you're looking at. If you have penciled in the names of notes in your music, that's okay. But don't stare at the letters that you have written in. Look at the printed notes. And if you need to glance down at the note name that you've written in, take a peek, but look at where the note is on the staff so that you're memorizing your note names and where they go on the staff. That is so, so, so important. Being able to move from, you know, note to note through a song like this is obviously really, really important. And a lot of times, you know, say you're struggling maybe with going from E to B flat. Well, then I tell my students to just sit and go back and forth between any two notes and just practice that movement, getting it in your muscle memory. 
sit and watch, you know, some silly video that you like to watch. Get your flute out and just practice fingering back and forth between a couple different notes without even playing. Think about all the notes that you know on the flute. For instance, C. Not an easy note to finger, right? Think about what the next note up from C is. D, of course, A, B, C. D, and the next note down from C to B flat. If you know what the next note up and down is from any given note, you're in pretty good shape because half the time, that's what we're doing. We're only moving up or down one note at a time, okay? So use your muscle memory. Your fingers can help you. If you're fingering a note, and the next note is one note lower. You know, if you're fingering a D and the next note is one note lower and your brain's going, oh, I can't remember. Well, what's the next note down from this fingering? Oh yeah, it's that, D to C. Yeah, right? So, and down one note from C is B flat and up one note from C is D. You know, flute fingerings are very challenging at the very beginning. Getting a good understanding of them, how they work, and their relationship to each other will go a long, long way in your playing. All right, keep up the good work, guys. Bye-bye.